we're going to be talking about hosting and um, hosting at home and how how to better host, how to be the perfect host um, for your house guests. Now, Pierre Corr had a conversation with Franz Exume, and he's the partner, uh, manage, uh, one of the managing partners of Everything Gourmet Limited. Let's take a look at that conversation. Hi. So I did tell you that we're going to be exploring the art of hosting your guests. We tend to be a little bit boring in Ghana when it comes to hosting guests, am I right? You know what I'm talking about. So from how to plate your food to the kinds of drinks and wines you should probably be pairing your food with, and or we're talking about Ghanaian meals you see in a minute. How do you do it? How can you get it done? Now, a friend of mine, his name is Mr. Franz Exume, very good friend of mine. He's half African-American, half Haitian, but Ghanaian by everything else, association, blood, at heart, and he's one of the best hosts I know. And, and when it comes to hosting people in his home, for little gatherings with his friends, he does it par excellence. So I've, I've I brought him here today, or rather I've come into his space. He has a nice winery, you know, in the heart of Accra. Hi, hi, Franz. How are you doing? Great to see you. <laughs> Great thank to you. see you, as always. And you look very lovely. Well, yeah. thank you. Yes, I love it. <laughs> and thank you for having me. My very So, pleasure. the first question I'll, I'll ask you is, uh, you know, in, in Ghana, I mean, you've, you've come here a number of times. Yes. We love to host people, but a lot of the times it's boys, boys, and girls, girls sitting around one pot of fufu or jollof, and we're all eating with our spoons and having fun. But sometimes that deters us from enjoying an experience that could be a little different, um, could be a little more upscale, and that even prevents us from inviting people into our space because we feel we don't know how to host. Mm -hmm. So I just want us to do the basics, you know. A lot of people are still a little iffy about stepping out into huge crowds because of the whole COVID-19 situation, yes. but they're a little open about inviting friends and family in yes. into their homes mm -hmm. specifically um, because maybe they know their status, they know they're negative mm -hmm. when it comes to COVID and all that, but they don't know how to host them. Yes. And they're also not willing to do a full spread mm -hmm. Five course meal, Certainly. maybe because it's not budget friendly, or you just can't whip up a whole meal by yourself. You know? So, I just want us to walk through some of the basics. Yeah. Thank you. I'd be happy to do so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's begin. What are some of the things you should keep in mind when you're hosting? Well, one of the things you want to do when you're hosting is to make sure that you're having a great time and your guests are as well. Okay. And so, taking partaking in the meal and drinks with it is part of that experience, yeah, as yeah, you can we, see. We love to eat and drink. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And so one of, the, one of the keys to hosting when there are meals is to pair it with wine. Oh. So you have the food and they're typically drinks, but there's a science and an art to pairing it with the right wine. Mm. And that's what I'd like to explain to you or okay. show you this evening. Okay, okay. Mm. Sounds good, sounds good. So, um, let's start here. I see we have some watch here. And I must say, everything is really nicely plated. Um, yes. I think it was a couple of weeks ago or so, we had um, an award-winning chef. I mean, she actually won... We had an award-winning chef. She actually won the Chopped competition. You know Chopped yes, on the Food Network? Yes, I'm familiar yes. with it. Yes. So she, Chef Mami Boache, is Ghanaian, but she won the competition. And mm -hmm. she's very particular about her plating, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. So we learned a few things from her. But how important is it to plate your food, first of all, um, when you're hosting? Well, we're the view that if the food looks good, it will probably taste good. Mm -hmm. And okay. so part of the dining experience is what you see and what you experience okay. with all of your senses, not just okay. your palate. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've got some wache here. Yes. Okay, you've got some tilapia. And that's a huge piece of tilapia. It looks <laughs> delicious. It really <laughs> does. I can't wait to dig into it. And mm -hmm. then there's jollof. Yes. And then there's some grilled chicken, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. there's grilled chicken. Okay. And then this would be chicken light soup. That's correct. Okay. And then there's banku. Banku, and don't forget... The pepper. The pepper sauce. The pepper. <laughs> so are there are things that Ghanaians know and love, and you're likely yes. to find in a Ghanaian home. So I want you to take us through. How, how, what do we pair it with when it comes to the wines and whatnot? Okay, so pairing is essentially a great way of having fun with your meal. Okay. You're combining food with the wine. Now, the food has certain characteristics, some salty, some fat, and other tastes. And the wine also has some characteristics as well. 
And so it's about blending the different chemistries and the different aspects of each item okay. so that they can conjoin and make an entirely different experience. Okay. So for example, uh, we have different kinds of wines and the golden rule in pairing is to make sure that you enjoy it and you can have fun with it and experiment and if you enjoy it then it works. Okay. So your tastes are what matters. Okay. However, there are some guidelines in terms of how you pair certain items together. All right. So the basic rule of thumb is for red wines, you go with red wines match well with beef or with goat or with red meats mm. because the red wine is dry, it's full bodied and marries nicely with red meat. Okay. Now with fish, you go with a white wine, something lighter, it's not as sweet, it has floral and fruity kinds of qualities to it and so the white wine goes well okay. with the fish. Okay. And with the soup that has probably some pepper in it, yes. you want to go with the wine. This looks like some good pepper soup. I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> and so you go with a, a white wine, such as this one, a Riesling. Okay. It's not terribly sweet, and the alcohol content is low. Okay. So when it marries with the pepper, it doesn't burn. Okay. Okay, so where do we start? Okay. Um, <laughs> hmm. Soup first. Usually, soup we can would, start with the soup, soup would first. A, would likely be a first course. That's if you're not eating with fufu or something <laughs> of the sort. Great place to start. Okay. So, soup first. That's some really good soup. <laughs> Seems so. Who made this? Ah, Your sister. <laughs> I'll tell you more. <laughs> okay. She does so, an excellent job, by the way. Oh, it's amazing. And I'm not even really a soup person, but mm -hmm, I'm enjoying mm -hmm. the soup. Okay. So now with the soup, as you pause, you would sip some of the Riesling. Okay. And so... so this is slightly sweet, a slightly sweet Slightly wine. sweet. Okay. Uh, it has a low alcohol content, so when it interacts with the pepper, it blends nicely. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. not now gasping for water all of a sudden. No, no. And you probably want it slightly chilled. And it lifts the cork. And then this comes this way, removes the cork, and it'll make a pucker sound. Voila! And that way you know you're doing the right thing. Now, I'm sure you took your time because of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So. And so we take our glass. Okay. White wine glass. So white wine glass is rounded but smaller. The shape smaller than that than one. The, and okay. so we take so this. This is a red wine. Yes. Okay. And then you pour. So guys, are you paying attention? To about this much. Okay. Not more than that. Okay. Is there a reason why? Um, you want to give the wine a chance to breathe, okay. and so the way the glass is shaped. It aerates it, and you can swirl it a bit. Okay. You might find some people that do this mm -hmm. to scent, and you get a scent of the grapes and the fruitiness and the floral qualities to it, and then you offer it to your guests. Okay, I like it. And so you're able to enjoy this nice riesling with the soup. That is a brilliant pairing. <laughs> this is morning. It's morning time. Okay. And Ghanaians like to have their wache in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're watching Breakfast Daily, there's wache here. You can eat it with us from home. It comes with spice. Okay. okay. We could have it with, with beef, I know. Yes. All mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. what would we typically pair with that? So since you mentioned it has spice in it, yeah. and sometimes it's had, you have it with beef, and you also have the, the, the beans, I would recommend a Syrah with that one. Okay. And it would be a petit cigar. This is the wine. Okay. A petit cigar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. How's it It's good. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. It's a red wine, full bodied. And I'll pour some. Red wines, you typically want to serve them at room temperature. Okay. And one of the reasons is it lets the molecules circulate mm -hmm. and you want to get a very nice bouquet and scent from it. So while this is breathing, that's what they call it, you can swirl it in your glass okay. again and then you try to get some of the bouquet. Mm. And it will remind you of the vineyard and the mm. grapes themselves. <laughs> so it goes back to what you said at the beginning um, with the food and drink. 
uh, smelling it, the look of feel yes. of it. It's all part of the tasting yes. and it adds to the enjoyment of the experience. It certainly does. Okay. It certainly does. And so the petit cigar will go nicely with this because of the spiciness and the heartiness of this meal. Like of this it. particular dish. So, Banco is here. Yes. I'm going to put a bit of pepper over Pitch here. Put your pepper? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got a bit of tilapia already as well. And for the tilapia, we're recommending a nice white wine, the Chardonnay. And I'll pour in your glass. Okay. Mm. Good taste. It's delicious. Fantastic when it comes to cultural nuances because um, I have and, and as do mm -hmm. you yes. a lot of friends who are not necessarily Ghanaian mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now how do you manage as a host or hostess manage the space so that one person doesn't feel discriminated against or insecure because mm -hmm. they're in the midst of people or uh, who are from different cultures that they're not familiar with. So one of the <laughs> things I like doing when I have uh, a mixed kind of uh, group of guests, I always ask if they have dietary restrictions mm. or the health considerations because I want to make sure I consider those as I prepare the meal for them. Uh, and sometimes I might even ask them would they like to wash their hands mm. beforehand. Mm. Some people do, some don't. Mm. And there are some instances where I feel very comfortable eating with my hand. Mm. And so I place a small finger bowl like at the table eating this just to give the person a choice. Yes, mm -hmm. this was the way to do it. In fact, you let me, let me even go there. <laughs> okay, I there you go. This, there you so go. <laughs> I'm going there. And dig in. This is more like it, right? <laughs> and then the other part is to open up the conversation with your guests so that they can tell you if there's something here that reminds them of something they've had at home mm -hmm. or if there's something they particularly like. And then another part is that by bringing it out in courses, the person doesn't feel overwhelmed. Okay. And so you want to take your time. And so the meal isn't simply about consuming food, it's a time of conviviality, of fellowship, of getting together and inter interacting. Okay. When it comes to cultural nuances, because um, I have, and, and as do mm -hmm. you, yes. a lot of friends who are not necessarily Ghanaian, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you manage as a host or hostess, manage the space so that one person doesn't feel discriminated against or insecure because mm -hmm. they're in the midst of people or uh, who are from different cultures that they're not familiar with. So one of the things I like doing when I have uh, a mixed kind of uh, group of guests, I always ask if they have dietary restrictions mm. or the health considerations because I want to make sure I consider those as I prepare the meal for them. Uh, and sometimes I might even ask them would they like to wash their hands mm -hmm. beforehand. Mm -hmm. Some people do, some don't. Mm -hmm. And there are some instances where I feel very comfortable eating with my hand. Mm -hmm. And so I place a small finger bowl like at the table eating this just to give the person a choice. Yes, mm -hmm. this was the way to do it. In fact, you let me, let me even go there. <laughs> okay, I there you go. Before this, there you so go. <laughs> I'm going there. And dig in. This is more like it, right? <laughs> And then the other part is to open up the conversation with your guests so that they can tell you if there's something here that reminds them of something they've had at home or if there's something they particularly like. And then the other part is that by bringing it out in courses, the person doesn't feel overwhelmed. Okay. And so you want to take your time. And so the meal isn't simply about consuming food. It's a time of conviviality, of fellowship, of getting together and inter interacting. Okay. So it nourishes the body as well as the soul. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's very, very deep. And that's very, the point very of it. deep. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I want to ask um, so, I mean, I've spoken about the cultural elements, but what about people who are maybe or feel, believe that they're from a different social class? You know, you may have people who earn more money than other people, yes. but they're all your friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or people from different religious backgrounds. I, how do we handle things like that? Well, uh, by being the gracious host that you can be, making sure everyone feels welcomed and a part of the process, uh, and just trying to accommodate whatever the issues are. At core, we're all humans, and we all consume to nourish ourselves. And so by bringing different items to the menu, 
the tap into what people eat locally or in other contexts is always a good way of inviting folks in. Okay. Mm. Very interesting. And then, um, so this is an interesting one, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm just going to blow it out of the park. There are people who attend gatherings, regardless of how small or how big, mm -hmm. to meet significant others, yes. or people who they hope may become significant others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a host or hostess, when you see that there are two people who sort of have a chemistry or t are taking a liking to each other, how can you sort of urge them to get to know each other better? Uh, possibly by asking one or the other to help me serve. <laughs> <laughs> and then that way they could be of service and interact with the person they fancy. Uh, and that is just to allow people to be able to leave the table and speak without feeling they're being disrupted. So this is creating an ambiance or an environment where people feel very comfortable and relaxed. And if there's love or some kind of connection that's brewing, then... We we're all in favor of it, thank yes, God yes, we thank the exactly, stars. certainly. Are there any conversations that you think, um, I mean, of course, it would depend on the crowd you have, mm -hmm. but any conversations that are no-go areas or conversations that, on the other hand, may be safe to have? Well, <laughs> typically, at public gatherings, especially around meals and tables, people avoid religion and politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it makes sense. However, uh, it can also be a setting where we talk about the values okay. that may possibly be reflected in a religious orientation or political ideology. So try to avoid those kind of hot topics. Okay. But other issues can be discussed at length. In fact, it's always great to have some music playing, and sometimes during the course of conversation, you as a host might introduce an idea, say, I was thinking about this, or what do you think of it? And that becomes part of the common conversation. And so you as a host, need, you need to be mindful of the tone of the conversation. If someone is being disrespectful or aggressive, you as a host need to check them discreetly and divert the conversation to a direction that's wholesome and engaging and beneficial. Sometimes people can get a little bit out of hand, get a little bit aggressive. Sometimes the, the arguments, you, you try to avoid politics, you try to avoid religion, you try to avoid talking about values that... Um, may be offensive to one party or a group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, of people at the table or in the space mm -hmm. and or um, things that people find interesting and they, they're wondering why nobody wants to talk about mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. How do you handle, when, handle it when a, a, an outbreak or an outburst comes about? Well, um, a lot of times you can deflect a tense situation with humor. Uh, and as the host, it's my responsibility to make sure everyone feels safe and comfortable. And so if someone's being belligerent or attacking a guest, I stop them. I might even blow a whistle and say, time out, time <laughs> you, out. You take it that far. This, yes, this is. And, and I take it that far because it's a humorous way of deflecting yeah. and breaking up the tension. Okay. I might even blow a whistle. <laughs> and then everyone will be startled. It's part humor, but it's also effective. And declare some ground rules. Listen, at this table, this is a house of love. We all get along. We're brothers and sisters, so let's behave that way. Okay. And if someone continues to be belligerent and attacking, I might pull that person aside and say, listen, you've had a couple glasses, two minutes. Why don't you come in the living room and sit? Take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But as a host, it's my responsibility to make sure everyone at my table feels welcomed and affirmed and nourished. Okay. What are some of the topics you find go around well, when there's lots of hearty food, lots of great wine, what are some of the topics that you find go around well, go down well with, with guests of any background, any interest? Uh, sometimes it may be uh, music or some art or some recent event or something that took place on another part of the world to see if people are engaged and so forth and just have open-ended kinds of conversations and not stay in one subject area but float. Okay. And a lot of times the guests will bring up their own topics of interest and they'll share their experiences. Another way to do it as a host is to have a question that everyone in the room answers. Oh. What was the most incredible experience you had last week? Or at what point did you feel that you really connected with your true self? Mm -hmm. And each person would give an answer to that and that opens up a whole avenue of conversation and discourse. So this is um, steamed and Sauteed meats? Yes. Beef, it's a beef. Okay. It's a beef. Mm. What do you think? 
<laughs> All right. You look like you were having a lot of fun. Oh, I had a lot of fun. Oh, my goodness. You know, the whole safety was an excuse that I could go and eat good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm on a diet, too. <laughs> uh, you yeah, spoke a diet for the week. All right. Anyway. There are some people in this building who kill me when they're watching this. No, but I mean... And, and we discussed this, yeah. that it, it's a, a lot of people don't know how to host people. Mm. You go to some places, you feel like an outsider. Yeah. Just because you, you meet people, you're meeting for the first mm. time. There are lots of people with different temperaments, different yeah. experiences. Yeah. And I just wanted us to talk a little bit about that, how to be a good host Fantastic. when you're, you're entertaining people. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30am to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.